Hi, I'm Johan and according to the 2020 ECASA State of the ICT Sector Report, South Africa's fibre market is billed as one of the highest growth industries, with fibre to the business and home subscriptions increasing by 168% between 2015 and 2019. With only 15% of South Africans having reliable internet connectivity at home, it is clear that internet connectivity still has a long way to go. We at Miro empower our business partners to connect communities and to make your fibre decision easier, we will discuss some of the most frequently asked questions about passive optical networks, the technology behind the last mile connectivity. What is FTTX? FTTX is a generalized term used to describe the different types of fibre deployments, where FTT stands for fibre to the and X is merely a placeholder to describe the end location termination. For example, FTTH stands for fibre to the home, FTTB stands for fibre to the business and FTTC stands for fibre to the curb. What is the difference between active optical networks and passive optical networks? An active optical network can be seen as multiple point-to-point -point connections between the service provider and its clients, whereas a passive optical network uses passive or non-electrically powered devices to split a single fiber strand into multiple fiber connections for its end connected customers. What is the difference between EPON and GPON? So EPON or Ethernet Passive Optical Networks functions on Ethernet standards and operates on the protocols as defined by the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers or the IEEE for short. EPON offers symmetrical data rates of 1 gigabits per second downstream and 1 gigabits per second upstream and a splitting ratio of 64 connected clients per PON port. GPON or Gigabit Passive Optical Networks operates on the standards as set out by the International Telecommunications Union or ITU for short. GPON offers asymmetrical data rates of 2.5 gigabits per second downstream and 1.25 gigabits per second upstream and a splitting ratio of 128 connected clients per PON port. An additional feature of GPON is triple play services that splits the signal between video, voice and data. For the video component, service providers can incorporate satellite TV signals into their passive optical networks using a CAT-V transmitter. What are the components required in a passive optical network? So regardless of using EPON or GPON, you will require the following components. An OLT or optical line terminal, also referred to as the head end, which is a layer 2 device with multiple PON ports to connect your end customers. A passive SFP module, which is basically the light source that is used with your OLT to transmit this fiber signal from the head end to your connected clients or termination points. A passive optical splitter, which uses light prism technology to split the fiber signal from one input into multiple outputs towards your end or connected clients and then an ONU or optical network unit, which is the unit that is installed inside the customer's premises to terminate the fiber connection and also to convert to ethernet. What is XPON? The same as with FTTX where the X is simply a placeholder, the X in XPON simply means that the ONU can operate on either GPON or EPON. So no longer is there a requirement where you have to purchase an ONU that is specific for either GPON or EPON. XPON ONUs can operate on either EPON or GPON. Which PON solutions do we offer? At Miro, we offer two PON solutions, namely Ubiquity U Fiber and Bidicom's uh, EPON or GPON solutions. Ubiquity's U Fiber is predominantly GPON. Some other important things to note is that Bidicom offers a very cost-effective solution with lifetime warranties on their OLTs, redundant power supplies, DC power supplies for your DC or battery operated sites, Miro certification through Miro Academy, and a free to use network management software. What are the benefits of using Bidicom's NMS? 
BDCOM's NMS or Network Management Software allows you to manage and monitor your entire passive optical network from a single system. So you can customize your view based on your management needs. You can automatically discover downstream ONUs from a managed OLT, customize your dashboard for network performance and fault finding, and receive email alerts for proactive fault finding and disaster recovery. As a value-added distributor, Miro offers in-class and online certification training through Miro Academy and technical support for any of your after-sales technical support queries. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to check out our business-to-business e-commerce site on Miro.co.za. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe to our channel for more content like this or hit the bell icon to get notified of any future uploads.